Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays where it's time for another Minecraft update and as ever we're playing with the uh, Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack which is why there's so much complicated magical stuff scattered around over here. Um, let's see so this is this is what I was talking about in the last episode where where I said we ha I had this I had this blood altar here with the um, with the blank runes around it to make it into a level two altar and this tank that was feed that we were pulling blood out of the altar with and this the tank was now was completely full so that was going quite well um but the uh we've now i've now gone in and done the improvements i was talking about so we've got three different blood altars here the first one over here now is for dropping off any any blood that you happen to have so we've got the uh the dagger of stabbing yourself in the finger so if i pick that up and actually put it into my uh, into my hotbar so I can do stuff with it like so. Then I can come over here, stand stand next to this. That uh, enchants it properly. And if I stand here now, I can use it as as before. Blip, and as you see, the amount of blood in the altar has gone up significantly, and my health has gone down significantly. So that's working as expected. And we now have this can now be pumped out of here through the, with this uh, pump you can see here along this pipe into this tank, and then from here. It can either go out into the second new blood altar, and this one is the one that's loading up the the magic system for um, that, that that allows you to do stuff with runes. So this is the one that I was talking about before that allows you to create um, lava or water out of nothing. And maybe there'll be more things to follow that follow on from that later. We shall see. But I know there is definitely a system that allows you to use this to use this blood orb to link the, link the uh, life force in this in this um, blood altar off to be used elsewhere. More interestingly is the original blood altar, this one here, is now is now has the other uh, blood being pumped into it. And as it gradually rises then the, the signal on these um, on this redstone on the floor will, will also gradually rise because this comparator reads the amount of blood in here. When that gets high enough, which it just has, we then get another pulse of redstone coming around here like this, and that causes this block, one of these blocks of compressed stone to be passed out of the chest into here, where it then gets magicked into a blank slate like that, and then carried out along here into this chest, where we now have 84 of these things. Now, I've got this, and the reason I've set up this automation is in order to make the next level of the, uh, the altar, I'm going to need a huge number of these blank runes, which takes a lot of blank slates. So it's going to take about 320, I think I worked out, um, blank slates in order to do this entire build. And there's no way I was going to sit around and do all of that manually. That's crazy talk. So, in order to try and help with that, we've got a um, we've got a bit of a um, a bit of automation going on here, and now the now the main slope or part is well, partly it's the, the rate that it, that we can pump the blood through into into these into this altar. But given that I think it probably carries on running when even when we're not in the server, that's not so much of an issue. The main problem now is the rate that we can get the life force, the life essence, this blood out at. So this is this this is as you can see at 2.2 buckets and probably gradually going down yes there we go 2.1 so it's, it's gradually trickling out of here into this tank and on into this one as i said but this will eventually run out and and you can't always have somebody around to poke themselves in the finger with one of these things so the next thing i did along these lines was to head out all the way over to the um the mob farm and i've repurposed it with the blessing of my uh, compatriots, so it's not it's not too. Um, I haven't just gone in and said, "Nope, all your mob farmers belong to me." Um, so if I make my way down here. I can drop down through this trapdoor here, down into the into the depths of the mob farm where I can find a Tristan. Okay, <laughs> so what we've got down here now is a mob farm. Uh, right, good. He's given me the given me the knife the knife back. So we've got this. Dag I built this dagger of sacrifice. And the Dagger of Sacrifice is very similar to a lot of the other uh, sacrificial knives, except this one, you use it on the mobs, and then when they die, they produce blood that goes into this blood altar. So I've built yet another one of them. And that's got a pump on the underside of it that pumps the, the uh, life essence out of there, through here, and into this tank. So over time, this tank will fill up, and eventually... The the the, uh, the ten buckets in there will go over into here. Now this stores thirty two buckets, so it's a little bit unbalanced. We need to come over here, and we need we need basically to put in some sort of automated system for killing these mobs, and then we'll get the um the the uh, the life force through a bit more neatly. But this does mean I can come along here, I can break that tank, and give it to Tristan by mistake. Thank you. There we go. I pick that up, and I can now replace it with an empty tank. And that will start to fill up in much the same way with the with the uh, life force from the uh, from over here, 
And I can now take this tank and try and get out of here. This is the tricky part. Tristan has reminded me I've forgotten to leave the dagger behind. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad one of us is um, is uh, keeping an eye on me. Oh, that wasn't enough jump. Needs more jump. There we go. All the way out. And now I can I can now take this back over to the uh, tower, as before. There's the tower. Have I got enough? Yeah. Ooh, yes, just about got enough momentum to use the top fit as a runway. So I can can land up here nice, nice and neat, neatly and easily. And then come over here and use the elevator to go back down. Go back down again. All the way down to the bottom. And here I can now bring this, this tank out, the copper tank I grabbed from before. I can just shove it on the top of here. And so the idea is that I can... the um, over time, if I leave this for a while, this, the, the, uh, all the blood will drain out of here into the bottom tank and be used up by the system. So that'll all work quite nicely. As you can see, this one's now emptied completely. Um, but that means we are now generating generating the life force from from mobs instead of from ourselves, and this should make it a bit more a bit more automatable, a bit and, and give us a bit of a slightly more of a ready supply of it. Ooh, there's another one just being being done as we as we speak. So the system is working quite nicely. Um, I didn't really quite run through this in detail. So we've got the comparator here that is reading the amount of blood in the altar off and sending it over the here. So at the moment it's a signal of five, which is means it's about a third full. Oops, six, so slightly more than a third full because it's out of 15. Um, <clears throat> and now because redstone has a fairly high resistance, it drop, the, the power level drops by one for each, each block along here. So when this gets up to... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When this gets up to seven, uh, so about half full, it will then ping. It will then mean this side of the comparator, this side of this AND gate, will go high. This thing is a timer. So as you can see, it's got this little needle that rotates. We've got we we can set this to whatever time we want. Um, but at, at, eventually, it'll rotate. It'll boop this thing over here, and that'll make this side go high as well. And when that happens. Because it's an AND gate, both sides, this, the output goes high, we get, that goes into this repeater which is essentially acting as a pulse extender because the pulses before were too too short for, the, for to um, out, output from the chest. And that sends a pulse down here for slightly longer which triggers this servo which then will then pull something out of this chest. And you can see there's loads and loads of compressed stone in here because I need loads and loads of those blank slates. And just over time, this will gradually empty the chest through the black, through the blood altar and turn them all into, into the into the blank slates that we need for in order to make everything. So this is working pretty well. The, um, the barrel on top here is gradually draining. It's a 17,000. I think that's a 16,000 barrel on the bottom. So um, this is still more than there's still some in the in the copper tank on the top. But that's that's fine. I don't care exactly how long it takes for this to run because I'm going to sign off fairly relatively soon. And so that that works. It is producing the um, the the life essence in a more sustainable and automatable way and putting it into here. Eventually we apparently will be able to make ender tanks and that will allow the our life essence to be teleported from all the way over there to here um, and so you won't need to run back and forth to, in order to get the tanks but for now I think this sort of system is good enough. Um, we may end up when the system starts working really really well we can make more of these copper tanks and then you'll be able to go over and get 64 buckets at a time instead of 32 buckets at a time or more than that and just generally it, there'll, be, there'll be enough to keep the whole system running quite happily which is the um, which is of course the end goal. Another thing I did, right, was um, I, so I was, I've been working through the uh, the quest lines as is as is my way. Uh, so if I have a look at the Black Magic Tier Two, these this is the exciting stuff I've been doing. Um, so yeah, that was the Dagger of Sacrifice I made that allowed me to do that. That that took um, it was just a chuck an iron sword in the Blood Altar. Easy, nice, no, very very straightforward one that one. Um, as, as they go. Um, and then I, um, I I soaked a book as well. That told me how to make the blood altar three. So um, here's the stuff I need for that. I can't do this until I've made an enormous quantity. Until I've made twenty blank runes, which requires, as you can see, an enormous quantity of blank slates for each one. That's uh, five, ten, sixteen. So there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff required there. So I'm not going to be doing that one for a while. But it's it, it's it's ticking away and working. So the next thing was going up this way: a gold promise acceptor and a blood chest. And the blood chest allows you to um, repair things for, for the low, low price of just using up some of your blood supply. And this is the cheap blood stuff as well. So if I put this um, IOT in there and my sentient sword in there, 
they will they will be repaired. You see that one's happened already. You can see the blood level flickering here. It's pulling out of the tanks over here. And now they're both repaired. I can put them back in my inventory. Uh, let's put them back in where I actually want them to be. And it does rip through a fair amount of the blood, but we do seem to we've we've never seemed to have a particular shortage of blood, so that's not too much of a worry. And also, additionally, I've made um where have I put it in my backpack? There we go. This sanguinary pedestal. And this is the first step of allowing you to, to create an automated um, blood creation thing. Um, I say first step. We, we accidentally made one in an earlier episode by trapping a, a self-healing mob in the furnace. And the furnace just filled up and up and up with blood. And we were able to pull enormous quantities out of that. Um, but this is a slightly more sensible way of doing it. With the sanguinary pedestal, you can make that and then also of this one and then also the spiked plate to go on the top of it and the idea is that if the mobs stand on the spiked plate it sucks the blood out of them into the into the um, pedestal and you can then connect it could direct that to a fluid tank as well so potentially at some point in the future we'll split off the um, the mob killing thing into to be slightly wider be two wide instead of one wide um, and then we'll have the opportunity to, cap, to kill mobs on both the um, the altar and this sanguinary pedestal and hopefully be able to get that, that therefore gather both types of blood from them and we'll just run back and forth with both types of with both types of tanks and uh, and, um, and and have a nice steady supply that said this supply hasn't been a problem before because there have been lots of other people going around being generally bloodthirsty and killing things so we haven't had a shortage of blood up until now uh, there we go that's what's in my syringe a decent amount that's that's filling up again quite nicely uh Yes, yeah, so, so we haven't we haven't had a shortage of it yet, thanks to gen general psych psychopathy among other people. But if I'm going to start using it for repairing things, we're going to get through quite a lot. And and also, if the, if the uh, mob farm is no longer relying on people manually killing mobs, these things might not fill up quite so much. So we shall see how it goes. Um, yeah, the, the the blood supply may be in in, in, in fairly high demand, should we say? So, what have other people been up to? Well, Al has been uh, helping by making some of these uh, these things because these are, I think, project these are project red um, comparators and timers and things like that, rather than vanilla mine Minecraft, which makes it a little bit more uh, complicated. Um, but he's been working on that, so he's produced all of these th all these bits and pieces for me for enabling me to do that. He's also made a carpenter, uh, which I gather is a um, I think is over in the uh, personal crafting building. So in here somewhere, this looks new. No, that's, grid, that's a grid power thing. That's an engineer. But the, apparently the idea of it is it, it gives you an alternative to the blacksmith's workshop, engineer's workshop, and so on that doesn't require you to use um, use up the tools. It uses power instead and is a bit slower. Um, I don't know where it is, though. Oh, here it is. Carpenter. Um, so you can put things in here and it will do stuff and squish stuff and make stuff and stuff stuff um, and apparently this is better because it doesn't as I say it doesn't wear the tools down um, it just uses power instead and is it is, is a better alternative to these things where where the recipes exist so we'll be using those and that in the future but then maybe I'll do a bit more learning about it <laughs> he's also gone mining for gold in order to um, replace some of the stuff that I've been using up because I've been all of this blood magic stuff is very very expensive on the gold front so um, Oh, actually, I was going to say so. There's almost none left, but actually, somebody has been going around and doing a load of load of mining, and that's back up to 64 uh, ingots again, and a, and a decent number of plates. So this is going fairly well. Um, but yeah, this has been once again, Lawrence plunders everybody else's resources in order to continue his quest lines. Um, nobody seems to have minded too much, but maybe I should do a bit of mining at some point. Um, Mike has been adding windmills and water wheels. I've seen the windmill, the additional windmill over here. There it is. Um, well, technically that's the original windmill, and then a second one was built to to uh, to replace it. But um, uh, oh, oh, back over there, um, so there is an additional windmill now. I don't know where the water wheels are. Um, presumably somewhere near water, but I don't know if you need flowing water or not. I would suggest you come back for the next stream on Monday and ask about that because I don't know where the I don't know where any of that stuff is. Tristan has made a resonator over here, which is currently in use. This is perfect timing, and this takes four item four item blocks and does some sort of particle accelerator beam thing. This reminds me a bit of um, Iron Man two, Iron Man three, whichever one it was, where uh, Tony Stark was trying to make the new elements, um, and then it zaps this thing in the middle until it turns into something completely new and exciting. So that's um, that's fun.
as I say, that was one of Tristan's things. Oh, there we go. Ping. It's just turned into a, a, a glowing, sort of pinky purpley block instead. And he's quite excited by it. Hooray! Well done. Can I, can I, can I, can I applaud? Let's see if I can applaud. Uh, I can. Let's applaud to him. There we go. <laughs> uh, okay. So he's been also been off killing withers as he, um because he's violent like that apparently. Um, we've got a lightning rod for, for generating extra power. So if you hear any lightning storms, that's probably why. Because not only does it, I think it's this one, yes it is. Not only does it um, catch lightning and uh, turn it into electricity, it also summons lightning just like that. And I was looking in the wrong direction just as it happened. That's unfortunate. So I'll stand here for a little bit longer and see if I can spot it. He was also very helpful with uh, modifying the mob farm, as I showed you earlier. Um, so having me run some of the pipes and making sure I didn't get accidentally eaten by anything while it was going on. So that's been um, that's been pretty much everything we've got up to uh, in, the, in the last stream. It was it was a pretty pretty good one, I think. We um, I, f I feel like I got a lot of stuff done with all of that, um, all of the uh, oops, I'm not going to be able to make it out of here. All of the automation of the um, uh, the the blood sacrifice stuff. So that's gone quite well. Ow. Um, oh, but as you can see, the uh, it is actually it's really ripping through the blood here. So we've gone down to half this tank left. So it's, you. Stop standing on that. Um, it's got through a good half of the um, the blood I brought over already, but it is ticking away quite nicely at producing these um, these blank slates. We're up to 94 now, so that's 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 good. It was on about 80 before, I think, or 80 something before. So that's that's running quite well. That's another one just came through. 95. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this is going. It, but it is going to need a certain amount of manual reloading for the time being. So maybe I'll nip back over and, and get another uh, another barrel of blood before I before I sign off. But as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to come back on uh, Monday to watch us actually doing the stream, and on Wednesdays to watch me doing the other stream where I'm playing uh, Factorio Space Exploration at the moment. And then these these videos on Saturday and Sunday. So these ones come out on Saturday to where to where I'll give you a bit of a um, bit of insight into what's been going on in, in, in Minecraft and on Sunday the same sort of thing for uh, for Factorio so lots lots going on on the on, on the channel here and with any luck I might remember to actually do some um, some uh, what do you call it videos uh, so, some I say remember I might actually have time to do some um, GTA videos as well so thank you for watching I shall stand here for a few minutes and kill some more mobs in a blood generate kind of way oh I've got withered that's a shame um, yes, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.